recording. Sorry, it's a little tight. I was I'm doing a lot of stuff behind the scene, and now we're ready to go live in about five seconds. Sorry, five more seconds. Five. And we are live. Hello again, everyone. Uh, hopefully, you can hear me just fine. And we just had a talk with Bob, and Bob is now here in the room. Hi, Bob. How are you doing? Hi, doing well. Good to see you, Leo. You're doing a great yes. job. Well, thank you. I must say, I am back to uh, asking questions, but for the last two hours, I have been running after pre-recordings. I have been doing the re-encoding and stuff like this, which means it doesn't look like this, but this was very much of a marathon. And I'm glad to be here, uh, to be in a room with you, because I'm actually going to be able to whew, rest a little bit. Did you see the presentation? Uh, not yet. Okay, can I lie? <laughs> if I was <laughs> if I were able to lie, I would say yes, I've been very attentively watching everything in a presentation, but sadly no, I've been quite busy elsewhere and because well, no, we don't need to tell, tell them about this. But uh, Bob, do you have the pad open in front of you? Uh um, yes. Well, I can't look at both at the same time, but uh, it's um, fine. You don't need to see my face. Uh yeah, okay. you've seen it oh, enough already. Yes, I okay. I see it here. Uh, can you have multiple implicit button files? If so, how would you know which link came from what files? Uh, you, I guess they're, they're one-way links, so you embed buttons in any number of files that you want, and you traverse them, uh, or they perform actions for you. Uh, there are three categories of buttons. We were showing you implicit buttons, which is one category. Then there's explicit buttons, which have uh, can also perform arbitrary actions, but those you embed one at a time in a file, and you say, okay, I want this to be a link to an org file section or something. And, and then... Uh, global, Sorry for the interruption. Keep going. Uh, the third uh, kind are global buttons, which we demonstrated uh, there when you, you put those in your personal button file, and then you can access them by name anywhere in Emacs without even having a buffer up on screen. The next question. So I should just go down the questions. You don't have any, Leo? No, no, feel free. Uh, I'm mostly here, you know, to be the pretty face that when problem happens, I'm here to help. But since you have questions already in the pad, I'm more than happy to have you answer the question from the pad. And okay. if we have a little more time, I'll come up with my own questions. So don't worry about it. Yeah, and encourage people to come into the chat. You know, we can do something live and then, uh, you know, go, go back to the Etherpad and deal with these later as well, if people want to talk. So yeah. So just to specify this, we might first have you answer the questions on the pad first, and we'll open up the BBB a little later. For now, just you on the pad. I'll keep sure. you posted. Uh, so uh, are we showing the pad so people see it, or I need to share so, that myself? You might want to. Um, uh, so yeah. I'm sharing the pad right now. I'm managing what people are seeing on the stream. You might want to have the pad in front of you and read the question anyway to know which question you're actually yeah. answering. Okay, I do have the pad separately. Okay, what about using implicit buttons with multiple people with different configs? Uh, not quite sure what the question is, but um, hyperbole is always thinking about you know people working collaboratively, though it, it is also somewhat focused on your personal information. So as you saw, when we embedded um, a variable, either an Emacs list variable or a, an environment variable in a path, you can share those with people. You can embed hyperbole buttons in your email messages, and they'll adapt based on the environment that the person activates them in. So there's a lot of uh, useful kind of capability like that built in for collaboration as well. Uh, Coming in from org mode, would it be a fair assessment that a hyperbole is in some way a generalization of what most people think of the great features of org to work across formats, uh, with the hyperbole links buttons being the recurring example, and that it then further adds some capabilities, uh, again, across formats. Being a global minor mode uh, is interesting. I think it goes to RMS's talk that org's features could be more generalized, modularized. How is hyperbole in that respect? Yes, it, uh, hyperbole is meant to give you all of these capabilities across your entire okay. Emacs experience. Uh, so 
uh, everything you saw in org mode uh, works in all sorts of other buffer types too, except the the pieces that were activating org's specific features. Internal radio targets, are they able to link to other org mode files that are part of my agenda? Um, uh, certainly you can have, uh, you can uh, make a link type that uh, crosses similar to uh, what you saw in the, uh, the K outliner uh, links where you specified a file and, and then it just would have the, the sub part of the link that you wanted uh, that would reference the target as well. Um, your package advances how useful a mouse can be with creating links. Uh, that we didn't show, but you can just drag between windows and create an explicit uh, link between things as well. Do you have any experience or thoughts about how touch screens or mice could be used or improved with Emacs? Yes, I do. In fact, uh, well, not with Emacs. Uh, when hyperbole was conceived originally, it was part of a broader research project called uh, Personalized Information Environments. Uh, at the dawn of the web is when this started, and, and we kind of figured people would be deluged with maybe 5,000 email messages a day or just all sorts of uh, things like we, we are deluged with today. Uh, so we were thinking about sort of like org brain and the, the graphical uh, sort of navigation that you could do in hyperverses and uh, came up with uh, some uh, prototypes uh, that were kind of very iPad-like in, in the node uh, sort of views, and uh, but with uh, much greater navigation capability. So a lot of that isn't uh, implemented, but uh, we're always thinking about how to make things more useful. And you see the, the smart context handling that the mouse keys do, because you can, there's uh, drags associated with the action and the assist keys when put onto mice. Uh, and those do a great many things that, that sort of replicate what a touchscreen might do as well. Would you consider hyperbole to be more of a format spec that can then be handled however we want, or the engine itself along with that format, i.e. can the simple link formats be used for other extensible purposes? Yes, again, hyperbole was conceived as a hypertext engine that would be part of the personalized information environments or PIs, and, and it would link, uh, that engine would uh, then be available to multiple applications. So we sort of built an API, um, not a web API, but just a, a programming API uh, and that you can use, and that's documented in the manual, uh, to build other applications atop hyperbole. Uh, it turned out that a lot of people didn't have that capability to program it, so we just kept programming a lot of these default features that you see today with all the button types uh, to show people what was possible. How is the integration with org roam? Uh, we're just starting to look at that. You know, again, I, I just find uh, with hyperbole, uh, there are no external uh, required packages. You just load hyperbole and whatever Emacs has, that's all that it needs. So that's kind of unique for such a, a big package like this. Um, there are optional things like Ace Window that you can add on and then hyperbole will work with them, but they're not required. Um, so similarly, we try to never have any uh, separate C compiled programs like uh, SQLite or uh, OrgRome. Uh, which uses uh, SQLite um, that's required. However, we interface to external systems like that. So um, basically, you know, we'll do some interesting things with org roam nodes uh, in the near future. Uh, when does something, uh, when doing something, where do you determine where to put it? KOTL, Rolo, org. I like KOTL, uh, K outline for journaling. An org mode for getting things done. Um, sure, I mean, you know, org and uh, K outliner are both uh, outline uh, formats. So uh, I like K outliner for like requirements gathering. Anytime I need things numbered quickly, I'm making lists or, or hierarchies. Uh, I want those IDs there. Uh, org does some of that, but not nearly to the level that the K outliner does. 
Uh, the Rolo, again, I just stuff all sorts of information in there. And then we have very simple uh, search and retrieval operations that we can use on there. So I don't need to worry about all of these uh, like drawers and all the complexity that org allows because you want to publish something. I tend to use everything as a live hypertext and don't worry about printing it out or displaying it in some other format too much. So it, it depends on your taste, I would say. Would you recommend a specific resource for getting into hyperbole or should I just start with the manual? Definitely interested in getting into this. Thank you for asking that. Definitely don't start with the manual. The manual is uh, almost 170 pages. It's a reference manual for specific things that you want to know. For learning, once you install hyperbole, uh, part of the menu system is uh, control H, H, D, D for documentation and then demo. And that puts you into an interactive demo that you just walk through, so it's sort of like the Emacs tutorial. And uh, that'll get you started uh, much better um, than any other way. And the second thing to do after that, I would say, is watch uh, some of the videos. One of the videos is uh, a talk I gave earlier that's about an hour long talk introducing you to hyperbole and its concepts. So I think those are the two best ways to get started. And then you can move on to the reference manual if you're really good at reading. What is Hyperorg? Uh, <laughs> that's a name that Sasha made up, I believe, uh, for the talk here. Uh, I thought it should be Hyperborg. Uh, <laughs> uh, it would be a little funnier that, uh, right, we're trying to uh, be like the Borg and, and get people to use hyperbole and org together. And, and then you'll never... You'll never want to be anything else except uh, users of those packages. <laughs> so, uh, anybody want to talk uh, live on the big blue button? Uh, again, so the thing is, uh, I didn't give you the time when we were supposed to finish with the Q&A. And give me just a second. I'm. Cool. Um, so I've confirmed with a people behind me that we actually need to get moving to the next talk at the top of this minute. So Bob, thank you so much for answering so many questions. I'm sorry we don't have more time for questions because your talk I think was a little longer than we anticipated at first, but I still believe you've done a, a great job at first I'll, covering I'll a lot of stuff. I'll be on the etherpad for a little while if people want to push anything else there. Thanks. Yes. Also, if you want to stay here, we are going to open the BBB. If people want to ask you questions, oh. we're going to publish the link. Okay. Uh, Bob, we're going to need to get going with the stream. We're starting the next talk in 20 seconds. Thank you so much, and I'll see you later. Take care, Leo. Thank you. Bye-bye. You are currently the only person in this conference. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I'm still on this thing if anybody shows up for a minute, uh, but nobody's there. Is so. that the last one? No.
would you still be up to talking or? You're talking to me? Yeah. Uh, are there, yeah, for a minute, I'm going to just go take a walk uh, in a little bit, but I can quickly put this on pause. Yeah, just go ahead. One thing, whenever I've tried using any or setting up any knowledge bases, I've generally thrown them away after a while, slowly picking up more and more. Right now, I'm using org room and log sec. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one of the features I found in LogSec that I like is able you're able to have the link in such a way where I can make an outline of like everything I want to do on a week in one file, and then in the journal view that it will dynamically generate, it will show you the tasks individually on that day, just for that day. So, mm -hmm. is there any way? So it, like it creates kind of a, a journal based on uh, dated items that it's extracting from multiple other sources, right? Yeah. So it's got a section on, uh, below it that see, that's from different sources, and you can go and do that, and it will just dynamically put it at the bottom, mm -hmm. but just for those specific links. You know sort of like the idea of transclusion right as something that they they've addressed in org mode and we haven't really dealt with that in hyperbole so it, those are areas that we want to get into uh i think there's a lot of work going on in log seek and obsidian that i've, I've you know i look at when i have time um so there's definitely ideas to draw around that, you know. One of the things we find is there's just, you know, covering all across Emacs, there's so much to do all the time. And this being a part-time project, we can't, uh, you know, we have to think like uh, RMS does uh, across years rather than uh, weeks just because of the energy around it. But, um, you know, the, the more people can kind of like write a paragraph and say if if hyperbole or some tool could do this uh you know the more likely it is that we'll we'll approach it and turn it into reality yeah well like you could probably write some functions that will just dynamically grab information like that out and yeah well i mean like you have that with the the high high roller so you can just make arbitrary documents you know and just put stars at the front of each node and the high roll will pull out anything that you want to match on. Um, you know, it can be regular expressions, logic expressions with and or not. Um, so that's already there. And it's very simple with the other capabilities to just turn a search into a button somewhere in your file. So you, you basically create your own dynamic views then um, without any additional mechanism. But when you want to deal with like the dates and you want to see it, you know, that's a specific view that we would uh, program for you and provide. With not much and MU4E, the thing I like about not much more is you're able to, in your search queries, you can use uh, the ands and ors with subject headers or stuff that's only in the body of the paragraph of the email. Mm -hmm. or who it's to and from and i don't think mu4e has near that support and you could use something with org mode and you could do that type of there uh, you could do that type of stuff searching like based off of keywords with there's a package by alpha papa i can't remember the name of it but yeah org rifle or ql or ql yeah mm -hmm. and does like you have anything well, I mean, yeah, it's like, I, I'm not sure you, you combine, say, subject, colon, whatever, your regular expression, and you map that 
um, with a logic expression. So in a hyperbole, in high rollo, to do a logic expression, you just do it like a Lisp expression. So, but you use and or, XOR or not. So you say, you know, open paren, not, and then what you want to not match to, right? It, uh, this node doesn't have that in it. And, you know, a broader expression with an and around it would say, so it's not this and it's this. Uh, so that all exists the moment you pull up the interface to say, I want to do a string search, you can actually embed those logic expressions right in your search there and it'll do them for you. That would mostly be regex, right? Or is it a uh, different syntax? It's a different, so you can have regexes embedded in the logic expression, but the logic itself is done with like the equivalent of you know s expressions with and or not an xor so i could say and bird watch and it would only find uh uh outline items that contain the words bird and watch so it's very simple you know textual like that but then bird could be a regex if i you know, as well. Um, so things like that. You have to try it out, I think, you know, to really get a feel for it. I've tried it some. I just, uh, it's just a lot harder to, they have so many of these knowledge base programs that it's hard to make a knowledge base with each one of them and then compare them. Oh, I agree. I mean, that's part of why we built it, right? I mean, we built this before org existed. So, um, you know, I, I really do want to tie them together, but I, I, I agree with Stallman that org, you know, for scientific uh, research purposes has embedded so many things that people outside that community don't really need. And, you know, it's gotten to a level of complexity. I mean, you look at the code base that I, I still kind of, you know, happy to interface with it and use it. And I see a lot of great stuff in there, but I want to be able to have a much simpler format for when I just have all this unstructured data that I want to deal with. Yeah, there's definitely a part of org mode that that unmodularity and all the features that doesn't feel like Unixy and the rest of right. Emacs and right. I think like or yeah, just like a, yeah, just some of the features org ID. You know, it, I, I can't really remember what they the were. Opposite. It's like it, it's coming at it from you know that that structure process. Okay, we're going to tag everything with you know what. Uh, property it is and hyperbole is sort of the opposite to say well we have relational databases for when we're doing that kind of thing so this is for your everyday information where you know oh i just grabbed all this off the web or you know i just added in 200 files and now i want to deal with it and kind of mix it into my hyperverse what kind of capabilities can you give me to do that so say like there were 200 documents that somebody handed you and they all have this cross-reference pattern embedded in it, right? Which is a, a version of hyperlinks, but they're not actually hyperlinks. So you just create a couple line um, button type uh, in hyperbole because all the mechanisms there already. And then once you activate that type, all of those documents now have those cross-references as hyperlinks. Uh, and you solve the problem could be for millions of cross references with three lines of code. So that's the kind of leverage that we're looking to get without people having to, you know, touch the original uh, source format. One of the that's one of the things your package has uh, tackled was links in the wild, email addresses, websites right. that. Uh, people use and identify with and mm -hmm. and then you and got you the get all that behavior without having to learn key bindings like you do in org right i mean you got to know at least like 10 in org i think and you know it's really two 
largely in hyperbole. So for me, when I'm going along, you know, I just want to mark things, operate on them, and not really think about the the command a lot. And so, of course, we all know many uh, commands in Emacs, but you know, so I have that the editing commands, but the knowledge based commands I don't really need to add on that much more, and I can still be very effective. Nice. Yeah, you dealt with links in the wild while simultaneously advancing the state of the art in the with the implicit links. So, like, what can you do if you stay within your own system and you control everything? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's the you know people love implicit uh, buttons, but it it sort of <laughs> takes a while for it to sink in what you can do with it, right? Because it it is a little difficult to figure out how you create your own your own type but like like we have a github uh i don't know if you use github but uh type built in and you know with very short cross references it, it can access uh issues commits uh projects all linked to all of their things with just uh you know a few characters in your uh document and uh, so, you know, there's an interface to an entire web e ecosystem that's done in one module in hyperbole. And, you know, you don't, all you have to do is use it. Something that could be interesting there is if you had it with the uh, next uh, common list web browser, you click a GitHub issue on the website and it either downloads the source code or just goes and then the uses Maggot or Forge mm -hmm. to download the issues and then just automatically opens it up in Emacs for you to look at it there. That would be an interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we have that for, uh, so if you just type in any buffer, you put uh, bug, pound sign, and a number, and you uh, press your action key on that, that will display that bug number for Emacs in GNU's and the dialogue associated with it. So, you know, we have that similar kind of thing for GitHub, GitLab. Um, and uh, so it's, you know, a lot of people are interested in that because they have JIRA or something and they just want a simple way, you know, to get at their issues uh, in whatever web browser they use. So uh, that's very easy to do and one of the most common things programmers do. You still there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, it's just wondering. So, yeah, I hope, uh, I guess you've obviously explored hyperbole a little bit. Uh, you know, let us know what the barriers are to, you know, becoming a regular user and we'll work on this. One thing I found that I like about the K outline is if you uh, long form journaling. Mm -hmm. is if I do that with uh, centering the buffer, m making it a little bit bigger, the text a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. I, f I find that I like that more than org mode. If it's short enough, it doesn't matter. But if it's long enough where my com my thoughts are complex enough, uh -huh. I not worrying about buffer headings or body right. paragraph content or anything along those lines that less presentation right. work it helps a lot in that the automatic paragraph formatting just makes right. it work i type i'm good to go it automatically does everything right. like that right you can just write and you get all you get all this stuff for free that's kind of a lot you know that's like i talked about the cognitive overhead you know i think emacs people have a lot of trouble understanding why people stick with Emacs now, but I, I think it does, the, the common editing capabilities uh, are very similar to hyperbole, right? So you go across all these modes, different applications, but the editing stays the same. That takes so much off your plate compared to learning new hotkeys for every application, right? And 
and so you know we're we're sold and now now you want that kind of thing for your uh for your writing uh for your knowledge management and uh yeah i think org is you know really it was built for the scientists the researchers right they have to do all that stuff with the citations i'm never going to use the citation capability right i don't publish much anymore um so you know all that work is kind of lost on me whereas like you know better structured outlining is going to be a win for you know a very broad cross section of people so i i think it's you know i wish more people would give it a try but uh i think now we're doing a lot more things that are making hyperbole more accessible to people a lot of people i don't know if we can like people have asked for a doom interface or space max interface i do notice on reddit that tons of people seem to use one of those two and they've never learned emacs in its core form right they're coming from vi so they're vim users or something and they i guess they like all this layering kind of capability exposing the features so i haven't really looked at that but maybe you know if we did that and we don't have hyperbole on melpa so although you know some people they replace elpa mistakenly with melpa uh you know in their config and so they never see hyperbole <laughs> because it's not in their package list <laughs> like i didn't know this existed like well don't do that <laughs> One thing that would be nice for stuff like this is having a uh, Emacs in it for hyperbole with a knowledge base and then one with Orgrom and a knowledge base and one with the ZK package and a knowledge base, et cetera, et cetera. Is that something you might uh, might look at doing a little, you know, it's sort of like proof of concept of and share with us, you know, to give us some idea? of your thoughts i just thought of it while watching this talk and i might put together some resources of there's some other packages that or zk or there's another one of these packages that has a knowledge base i might put together resources like that see if i see anybody else's yeah that'd be great and do, do you avoid that have problem to note do you use uh Prots denote package. I haven't messed with that one yet. Yet I've looked at it. One contention I see between using all these right here is like you have the org FC pack FC package for like flashcards, and that would sound really nice for learning new English words that I ever come across. I could make that, put the description, and uh -huh. but if I it seems like you can either use org roam and you're completely tied into the org roam sys org system or you don't do that then you can't use any of those features where they treat each of the nodes mm -hmm. as a individual system mm -hmm. i've dabbled with multiple of the systems so maybe Are there's a way with org roam i've been having this one problem uh it's weird i get in this mode where like i pointed it somewhere and it worked at one time and and now i repoint it somewhere and I, then i point it back and I, it won't work anymore so i can't get it to sometimes index my set of word files and it seems like it should be so basic but you know there's something in the sequence of how it caches i guess the the directory of word files that maybe maybe i've solved it already i don't recall but I was just wondering if anybody else had that experience. I've mostly just dabbled in a couple of these systems and then haven't really chosen one to just use. Do you program? Are you by nature a programmer or is it like a hobby? Hobby. My e I haven't done too much on like writing my own function functions, but Emacs is by far the... Mm -hmm. biggest or longest program i've ever longest program config whatever right that i've ever used and you started on emacs how long ago if 
five or ten years ago, something yeah. somewhere around while. along that yeah. lines. Mm-hmm. Been a while. Yeah, it was nice having Stelm in there today, right? It's like, well, if you want an actual answer to something <laughs> that he only he could answer. There. I'm surprised how many package uh, questions there were on that talk. Did, what what about them? I was surprised just about how many questions there were on. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know, all, you hear all this negative stuff about him, but people are very interested in like, you know, where stuff came from. What, what, you know, why, why do you, why have you never used this package that everybody else uses and things like that? You know, what, what his worldview is since it, it is so different than, you know, so many other people's. All right. Well, great talking to you. And uh, good luck with your knowledge space uh, research. And yeah, let me know if there's something. Uh, you know, try out the development version of Hyperbole like I should. And that, uh, that'll that get you all the new newest features. And we'll get 9.0 out as soon as we can. Yeah, I use uh, the Borg, so I actually do try out the development already. Oh, great. Super. Also, because sometimes since I'm using the development version of Emacs, uh, it doesn't always. I've had issues compiling in the past because I needed the newer code. I think I'm not. I can't entirely remember, but mm -hmm. thanks for the package and good talk and nice ideas and talk. Yeah. Take care. Bye. You too. Bye. You are currently the.